Hi, for this video what I want to do is show you how to find your class limits and your frequency using Excel to make the process a little bit quicker when you have to build frequency distributions. Uh, there are going to be additional videos that I make after this one that show you how to expand the frequency distribution, but for this one I'm just going to focus on class limits and the frequency. So with this, what I have is 20 data points that represent the number of minutes spent listening to a podcast. And for this one, I am going to use five classes to set up my frequency distribution. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to organize my data. And with your data, a lot of times if you're working on a homework thing, you will have to either type in the data yourself, or if you're using an online homework platform, it is possible that you can download the data directly from the homework platform into Excel. That's what I happen to do to get this data set. All right, so I'm going to sort and filter this data from smallest to largest. So I've highlighted the data, hit um, sort and filter, and I'm only going to continue with the current selection. I don't have anything else that I want to sort. I only want to sort the data in A1. Okay, so if you notice now it has done from smallest to largest. Now for the class limit, since I'm going to be using five classes, I'm going to type in equals, and I want to do the maximum value. So I can either type in maximum and highlight the data. Or I could have just looked down here at the number 39. Since I put it from smallest to largest, I could have typed in my last number and just typed in 39. But the formula is the maximum minus the minimum of your data set. So again, because I organized the data, I could have just typed in 39 minus zero because the minimum is my lowest value. And then I'm going to divide that by the number of classes. So the number of classes that I have is five, and then I'm gonna hit enter and I got 7.8. With this, no matter what, whether it is seven, whether it is 7.1, whatever the number is, you are going to round up this value no matter what. Okay, so I'm going to use 7.8 as my class width. Okay, that number is going to be important in just one second. Okay, so I would round this up, and so my class width that I'm going to use is eight. Even if this were seven, I'm gonna round it up to eight. Okay, um, so my lower limit is going to start at my minimum value, which is zero. And then I'm going to do a total of five classes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take equals, and I'm gonna highlight the previous lower class limit. And then I'm going to add to it what number I decided for my class width. So in this case, my class width was eight. And so I'm going to add eight to that. And then I'm just gonna take this little box right here and drag it down until I have a total of five classes. So I have one, two, three, four, five classes. And that will give me my lower limits for my first five or for my five classes that I'm looking for. This number will be given to you in a homework problem. Uh, so that's where the five came from. The upper limit is always going to be one less than the next lower class limit. So my next lower class limit is eight. So the first class will stop at seven. So for whole numbers, it's always going to be one less than the next lower class limit. And then I'm going to just use the same pattern. I'm going to take my first upper limit and I'm going to add to it my class width, which is eight. And then I can just drag that down and it will give me all of my upper class limits. The key to this is you wanna make sure that your maximum value is contained inside your last class limit. So we can see that from 32 to 39 does contain 39. So my maximum value is included in that last class upper limit. Now for the frequency, like I said, I am just going to count. I am not going to use um, hand calculation, or I mean, sorry, formulas built into Excel. I'm going to just do this by counting. So for the first class, for this first class here, 
I am looking for numbers between zero and seven. So I'm just gonna fill that in with yellow. So from zero to seven. So I'm gonna go to my data set and I'm gonna look for any numbers that go from zero to seven. So for this, we can see that there are five numbers that go from zero to seven. So my frequency is going to be five. For the next class, I'm looking for values that fall between eight and 15. So I'm gonna come back over here to my data set and I'm gonna look at this and I can see that there's only two of them that fall between eight and 15, okay? Um, moving on to the next class, now we're looking for values that fall from 16 to 23. And so if I come over here, I can see that these values right here fall from 16 to 23. So if I count that, I have one, two, three, four, so my frequency is four. Moving to the next one, my next class is 24 to 31. And so from 24 to 31, I can see that I have a total of three values that fall from 24 to 31. And then for the last class, I'm looking for anything from 32 to 39. So from 32 to 39, I can see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six values that fall from 32 to 39. It makes your life a lot easier if you put the data in order from smallest to largest to be able to come up with your frequency distribution. One thing that I do advise checking is that when you get to the end of this, the sum should equal your total number of data points. So we originally started with 20 data points. So if I find the sum of this list, it should total 20. And if it does not, then you did something wrong and you need to go back and recount. I hope this video helped you to find the frequency in a frequency distribution using Excel to organize the data from smallest to largest. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.